Hey everyone, welcome to the Canine Culture Podcast, where we talk about everything dog. Q and A's with veterinarian professionals, rescue operators, everyday topics. We cover everything dog on this podcast. So make sure you subscribe to the Canine Culture Podcast on your favorite podcast platform, and make sure you're following us on social media on both Instagram and Facebook. Thanks again for listening. Now here's that next episode. Hey everyone, welcome to the Canine Culture Podcast. This is your host, Brittany, and today we have a special guest. Connie is joining us from the London Sanctuary, which is a nonprofit hound rescue and sanctuary. So welcome to the show today, Connie. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So I am uh, Connie Canaday with the London Sanctuary, and we are a hound-focused rescue. Um, we do adoptions. We also do do some sanctuary work for those who are not healthy or um, otherwise unavailable to be adopted. And then tell us a little bit more about London Sanctuary. How did it get started? Yeah, um, so the London Sanctuary started in 2010. It was founded by my husband, Jay Canaday, and uh, it actually started as a Dalmatian rescue. So um, at that, that was kind of one of those times in our history where they were doing one of those remakes of 101 Dalmatian. Oh, yeah. Everybody went out and got a Dalmatian, mm -hmm. and Dalmatians do not make the best family pets. <laughs> uh, and so people found out, you know, that there really is a lot of work with Dalmatians, and they were going into the shelters, you know, in in large numbers. So he started the rescue to help with Dalmatians. He was a fan of Dalmatians at the time. And, you know, over time, people got out of the Dalmatian phase. And just by nature of where we live, which is in the Osceola National Forest, hounds just became the natural progression for us because that's what we generally see um, dumped out in our area. So how do you guys normally find your dogs? Are you finding them from owner surrenders or uh, other rescues or shelters or kind of all of the above? Primarily, we get our dogs from usually from rural shelters mm -hmm. uh, and or from the forest itself. So again, because we live out in the Osceola National Forest, which is a big area for hunting, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people in the area will have dogs come up onto their property emaciated and just in really bad condition. And because the shelter in our county is a very small rural shelter, um, I think the euthanization rate is like 50%. Oh, wow. Um, so a lot of people don't feel comfortable turning those dogs in, and they wouldn't get medical care there because it's not a well-funded shelter. So we are known for the hounds, and people will usually reach out, and if we do have the space, then we'll take those in. And uh, are you guys, are you guys foster based or do you keep them? Um, I know some people keep them at their house or they have a facility. What's kind of your setup with the dogs? Yeah, we are foster based. So we keep a handful of um, what I call sanctuary dogs. Those are the ones that are unadoptable. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those are at my house. We have a couple of uh, what we call care for life fosters. So they're not really um, there for the active fostering, you know, going to events and that sort of thing. But they will uh, take a an older animal or or a medically needy animal in as their own, but we'll pay for all of the, you know, the vetting and so forth. And so they become a sanctuary foster. And about how many dogs do you think you have right now? Um, in care right now, probably 30-ish. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's a lot of mouths to feed, a it lot is. of vet bills. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. And um, if people wanted to be a foster, do you guys have a program or like an application process for those people? We do. So they could go to our website, which is www.thelondonsanctuary.org. And there are um, applications on there for the fosters and, of course, for adoption. And so they would fill out their foster application. And as soon as we get them through the process, which is usually pretty quickly, we'll pair them up with the foster coordinator and look for uh, a dog in, that's already in our program that might work in their household um, according to their dynamics. So, Okay. And then as far as the adoption process, you and I talked about this a little bit before the episode. Um, every rescue is so different. You know, some require the yard to be fenced in no matter what. Uh, some are very strict, you know, absolutely no kids ever. 
So do you guys have any like set criteria and what's your adoption process? Yeah, so our adoption process is they would go out online and do the application and then we're doing um, virtual home visits. So we started doing that during COVID and we, you know, we were kind of worried, is that going to really be effective? And we found it has. And so we just haven't gone back to doing in, in-person ones. Mm -hmm. And this allows more volunteers out of our area to be able to, to, to assist us. But um, what we're looking for there is we're really just looking f uh, for specific needs for the dog. So I would say there are very few hard and fast policies that we have. I mean, we do require your other animals to be up to date on vaccines, um, on heartworm prevention, because being in the South, heartworms are a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some medical things like that that, you know, that we're pretty strict on. But um, as far as fencing and children, it's really according to the dog. So some dogs, you know, don't leash walk well. Mm -hmm. They probably need a fence. Um, some dogs are a little more nervous. And so probably young children aren't for them, but older children are okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have some dogs that, you know, are fine with everything. Right. So. And then right now, what kind of needs does the rescue have, uh, whether that be physical items, donations? What do you think your primary needs are? Um, our primary needs are usually going to be dog food <laughs> and, uh, and you know, money for vetting. So those are our two primary needs. Um, sometimes blankets and toys, but I think we're pretty set on those right now. So I would say dog food and, and money for vetting are always needs. And uh, if someone goes on your website, is there like an Amazon wish list with the dog food that you guys prefer? There is not one on the website, but there is uh, the information on our Facebook page. Okay. So um, they can definitely find it there or they can send us a message on the website or one of our social media platforms and we can give them the list name too. Okay. And then what about some upcoming events in February or March or even just later in 2023? What kind of events do you guys have going on? Yeah. So we are just in general, we're typically at Pet Supplies Plus in Atlantic Beach the fourth Saturday of every month. Um, with some exceptions, but generally the fourth Saturday of every month, we're at the Lakewood Pet Supplies uh, Plus store the second Saturday of each month. And then uh, we do the Orange Park Farmer's Market, usually the first Sunday of every month. So those are kind of our um, standing uh, engagements that you can find us at. But then on March 18th, we're actually doing a special event with All for Pets. Um, it's called All for Pets St. Patty's, and it's going to be from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. on March 18th. And I know Chrissy will have lots of fun things going on there, um, probably raffles and games and, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what all she has planned yet, but but usually she throws a good time. So Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great. So if you guys are in the Jacksonville or Northeast Florida area, uh, make sure you calendar March 18th for the event at All of Her Pets. And then um, tell everyone where they can find you guys on social media. Yeah, absolutely. So on Facebook, we are The London Sanctuary. On um, Instagram, we are The London Sanctuary 1405. And then uh, one more time for everyone listening. So if anyone wants to make donations or look at the adoptable dogs, what's your website again? www.thelondonsanctuary.org. Well, thank you so much for uh, being here today and for doing all the work that you do. Thank you for having us again. Thank you for tuning in to the Canine Culture Podcast. Please make sure you subscribe to the Canine Culture Podcast on your favorite podcast platform and make sure you're following us on social media. If you have any recommendations, any topics that you'd like to hear, if you know of any guests that would be good for the show or if you yourself want to be a guest, please reach out to us, send us an email at canineculturepodcast at gmail.com or send us a direct message on social media. Thank you for listening and please share this with any of your dog loving friends.